Hi, I'm Claire and this is my Worldcon 75 highlights video. This is going to be a little bit of a convention report, a little bit of a haul, a little bit of a mess because there was so much going on during this Worldcon and if you've seen my previous videos on the channel you'll know that I went to Nine Worlds the weekend before Worldcon and then I went straight to Worldcon from Nine Worlds without going home because I wanted to be able to spend a couple days in Helsinki. I've done conventions back to back before and I would probably do it again because I think it is worth it in the end but I don't think I will do another convention where I go to one con and then travel to the next con with the same like set of luggage and everything. I ended up with way too much stuff and it was way too heavy and I don't really want to travel with that much luggage ever again really. That aside, let's start at the beginning which was right after the Helsinki vlog that I posted a few days ago. That happened on Tuesday. The convention started on Wednesday. On Tuesday evening I went out for drinks with the booktube group that was all at Worldcon whose videos I'm sure you've already seen but I will link them in the description below anyway if you'd like to uh, check them out. And then after that I went to a karaoke bar with some of the staff and volunteers from Worldcon 75 because I've been on Worldcon 75 staff for some time now. I was working on the Code of Conduct team before the convention and then I was working on the listeners team during the convention. I will get back to that. It was great to see everyone before the convention, to meet a lot of cool new people and see old friends and just let our hair down a little bit and have a drink, but it did mean that on Wednesday morning I wished I had gone home earlier on Tuesday night. I had to pack my Airbnb, get to the convention center so I could get to the hotel room that I was sharing with Brie and Caitlin during the convention and that's when I was cursing the weight of my luggage the most. I got to the convention center at around midday on Wednesday. The panels had already started by the time I got there but I wanted to check out the listeners table to see where I would be volunteering throughout the convention anyway so I didn't want to uh, dive into panels straight away. If you're not familiar with the concept of a listeners team it's basically a team that is the first point of contact if there's any kind of code of conduct, breach, incident, issue, anything. Basically we were there for people to come and talk to us if they had any concerns. We were there to record people's concerns and to reassure them and to escalate their concerns to um, whichever team was relevant. Basically just to listen to people as the name of the team implies. But I really really liked that the listeners desk was in a kind of very busy area that people could just go by and come and ask us what we were there for if they didn't know, which meant that we spent quite a lot of time talking to people about the point of having a listeners team, which I think was really, really great because people might not have come across that before. There were also some big billboards throughout the convention center where uh, the convention could put up announcements and along with things like Welcome to Worldcon 75, the Hugo Awards ceremony starts at this time. They would also regularly flash a board that said Worldcon 75 is an ask first convention, please read the code of conduct and there was a link to the code of conduct as well. So I thought that was really really great in terms of like not doing things like code of conduct or listeners because you feel like you have to, but doing them because you feel like they're a good idea. And I really liked that the convention decided to put these things front and center and actually say, no, no, we're quite happy to be doing these things. So I thought that was really, really great and I really enjoyed being a part of that. Also, if you've been to Worldcon before, you probably know the ribbons that you can put underneath your badge are quite a big deal and I started the convention with a few ribbons already. I've got one that says listeners and one that says staff and one that says turva which is the Finnish word for a sense of security and that people are looking after you and then there's this one that says I bear Helsinki which was in the uh, welcome pack. If you've been reading about Worldcon or watching other people's videos you might know that there were some issues with space on the first day of the convention. I 
did try to see some panels after my first shift with the listeners team and I couldn't get into a few things that I wanted to see. I tried to get into the opening ceremony and couldn't. I tried to get into the live tea in Jeopardy with George R. R. Martin and couldn't. I tried to get into a panel about pronouns in SFF and couldn't. That was a bit disheartening on the first day, but even that first evening I managed to see a panel that was moved from a smaller to a bigger room, so I think the convention handled that fairly well. That had absolutely nothing to do with what I was doing for the convention, so I didn't even know it was going on until I tried to get into the opening ceremony and couldn't and realized that quite a lot of people hadn't been able to get into stuff. I guess after I realized the opening ceremony was full up, I could have basically stayed there and queued for tea and Jeopardy because I really did want to get into that and I was kind of gutted that I didn't. But honestly, Worldcon only happens once a year and I don't get to go to Worldcon every year. So I found it difficult to justify to myself spending time in line. I ended up going to vote for site selection and going to register as a program participant around that time when I couldn't really get into panels. As I said, later in the afternoon, I got into a panel that was um, bad sci-fi book covers with Lee Moyer and that was really hilarious. There was just so much kind of cringe on display and it wasn't that the art was bad, it was just interesting direction decisions that were made and a lot of the covers were quite old but not all of them so that was really really good fun after that panel I ended up going back to the hotel room that I shared with Brie and Caitlin and by the time I got back they had been there for a couple of hours and we were all knackered we just ended up going to bed early which was a really good decision because the rest of the convention was quite full on. I'm gonna be honest, from Thursday onwards it gets kind of difficult to remember when exactly what thing happened because there was just so much going on, it was so busy. I was moderating a panel about literary agents and then later on I was speaking on a panel about NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month, and how to use it for your writing. I also had a listeners shift that day, I met up with so so many people and by that time the convention had moved quite a few things to different rooms so I was able to see some panels as well. One panel I really really liked was on building resistance and resistance movements in your writing and it had Cameron Hurley on it as well as Dr. Tiffany Angus and some other people whose names escape me now. I think it was on the Friday morning but they talked about a lot of really interesting stuff like how does a rebellion get started? Is it always directed by one charismatic figure or is it just loads of people working together and it was just a really really interesting conversation to listen to. At some point I went into the dealer's room to look at all the cute stuff and I picked up a few bits and pieces. At that point I was fairly conscious of my suitcase space so I didn't want to get extra books because I had already bought extra books at Nine Worlds and I knew how ridiculous my luggage situation was so I was trying to be good about about that uh, but I got this cool print of a very colorful dragon. I also got a different dragon because you can never have too many dragons and this is just a black and white postcard that I think is really really gorgeous and these two are from an artist called Iri M. Kervinen and I will put their details in the description box below if you want to check out their store and right next to their store was another art store that had this adorable print of a black cat in a witch's outfit which is just yes please that's exactly what I want. I also got from that same shot the most adorable set of bookmarks ever. They are Harry Potter potion themed. I first saw this one which has a cup on it and a full moon and says Wolfsbane potion eases the symptoms of lycanthropy. I just absolutely needed to get that because you know how much I love Remus Lupin and it's about lycanthropy and werewolves and I just needed to have it but it also came in a set so I absolutely had to get the rest of them, obviously there's three more. This one here says uh, the mandrake scream can be fatal and there's a little cute mandrake pot on there. Next we've got forbidden potion ingredient unicorn blood 
and you can see a cute vial there it's kind of shaped like a unicorn horn and then we've got the philosopher's stone transforms metal into gold and then we've got the elixir of life behind it of course and these are all from a shop called lampu art and i will put a link to that in the description box as well so that you can check it out if you like on friday night we queued to see the hugo award ceremony we found some pretty decent seed just a little bit elevated but not too far back and quite nicely centered we were i think fairly close to a speaker which meant that there was a little bit of echo which was unfortunate but the whole ceremony was so great and i found it to be really really emotional in some of the other ceremonies that i've watched in the past like that i've seen the live streams of they tend to start with um smaller awards or with some of the kind of more fluffy or bits of the ceremony if I can put it that way but here they started immediately giving out Hugo's they started with the fan awards and then they interspersed throughout the evening some other stuff as well um, there was some foreign awards being given there was a Finnish award there was a Japanese award for works in translation in Japanese all of it was really really great but I didn't expect them to start giving out Hugo's fairly soon into the ceremony and they were the fan awards and I love the fan awards and I also tend to get emotional whenever I see other people getting emotional so I was already kind of wobbling by the time that T and Jeopardy won for best fan cast which is one of my favorite categories ever and is also a category where I regularly listen to four out of the five legitimate nominees, right? And I support the Patreon of three of them. So this is how much I love Ditch Diggers and Tea and Jeopardy and Fangirl Happy Hour. So I would have been very happy with any of them to win. Emma and Pete Newman came on stage and were both very emotional and then did some chicken singing because bless their hearts. And I was already fairly well gone at this point and then <laughs> Lady Business won. It was amazing. I made some like weird ass noises when the result came out. I was so excited. And then Ira and Susan went and collected the award and gave a speech. And I was just like, I'm getting emotional talking about it now because they're my friends and they're doing amazing work and they got recognized. And it was just super great. After the entire ceremony which was just fantastic and so many things that I was rooting for won. I was just quite excited. After the ceremony I got myself a drink and found a spot to charge my phone and was poring over the Hugo Award statistics of all of the results with a friend when I got a message from Susan saying that her plus one didn't want to go to the Hugo Losers party and did I still want to go with her like I mentioned earlier that weekend which obviously I did because it's the Hugo Losers party and it's way too cool for me but I definitely wanted to go <laughs> if there was a spot. So I rushed over to Susan and Ira and Jay and we all went together to the Hugo Losers party which turned out to be at the steampunk bar in central Helsinki which was fortunate because I'd worn my steampunk outfit that day because it's my like nicest outfit and I wanted to wear it for the Hugos because the Hugos are fancy so I ended up being in a steampunk outfit in the steampunk bar at the Hugo Losers party getting free drinks and like taking a picture with the V Diggs. <laughs> I was like, how is this my life? But let's be honest, I was mostly hanging out with Ira and Susan and Jay and Anna and Thea from Book Smugglers and just staying in our little corner and chatting, which was tons of fun <laughs> because there was cake and there was drinks and chatter and my friends won a Hugo. <laughs> so I was really, really excited and had a great evening. And then it was 3 a.m. and I remembered that I had a 10 a.m. panel the next day and I was like, whoops. So I took a taxi back to my hotel and had not enough sleep. And then the next morning I had an extra large breakfast with extra amounts of coffee and went and did my panel on book reviewing. And um, I'm told by people who came to that panel on the Saturday morning that it was all right and that I was making sense and making good points so that's good and also thank you to everyone who came to that panel because if I hadn't been on the panel I don't know that I could have 
got up for 10 a.m. that day. But that particular panel was the end of my obligations as a program participant. So I just had my listener shift and that was pretty much it. I went back into the dealer's room and got some presents for John because it was his birthday. And then I went to a bunch of different panels. One that I liked in particular was on the care and feeding of secondary characters and it had Merle Lafferty and Teresa Nielsen Hayden on it. Mer also gave me a copy of her new book I should be writing, The Writer's Workshop, which I'm so so excited about. If you are into writing at all, you probably already know Mer's extremely long-running podcast I Should Be Writing, where she gives advice to new writers. And this is basically the podcast in book form where it has a lot of writing advice and it's really well presented as well. It's just very beautiful. And then it has quite a lot of writing exercises at the end where there's just space for you to write in the book, which I think is really cool. And also Mer signed the book for me, which is always really, really exciting. This was the only book that I actually got at Worldcon because I was just worried about suitcase space. Another panel I really enjoyed was the Sunday morning one that Thomas was on about book blogging. This was another 10 a.m. panel but we got up bright and early to support Thomas. He was talking about his SFF reviewing blog that he's been doing for many many years and how having the booktube channel has changed the way that he does the blog and how he integrates the two of them together and kind of flying the flag of booktube which was always good. Teresa Nielsen Hayden was on that panel as well and she's always great to hear speak. If you're interested, Caitlin has more footage of that panel in her Worldcon videos and there will be a link to that in the description below. But the final thing that I wanted to mention on the Sunday is that I went into the dealer's room again with Brie and we found this beautiful, beautiful leather working shop that looked like it was right out of a fantasy novel. I wanted to get myself something really nice because I had a lot of groats to spend. I don't know about other conventions but at world cons if you volunteer you get some tokens according to how many hours you volunteered and you can usually exchange those tokens which are called groats again stuff in the dealer's room. So I had like 15, 20 groats, something like that. And I wanted to get myself something shiny. So I got this pendant. It was a little bit more than that, but the groats made it affordable. They didn't actually have this in stock when I showed up. They had a lot of earrings that looked similar. They had a set in that kind of color that I thought was gorgeous, but I can't really wear earrings. So I was talking to the woman in the stall and she said, no problem, I'll just make you one, come back in a few hours. And she made this and it is just, it looks so pretty and I'm so happy with it. I'm so glad that I decided to treat myself. After I went back to the leather working stall to pick up the pendant when it was done, I went to the closing ceremony and then I went back to the hotel to the dead dog party, which is the party that is held for everyone who's still there at Worldcon and still toughing it out after several days of conventioning. And I should mention that by that point I was pretty ill. It's fairly common for people to get ill when they come home from conventions because there's so many people in one space and just germs happen. In that case I had the con crud before the convention was finished, uh, partly because poor Caitlin had it before me and then I got that of her and then it just didn't really get better until I got home. But before that there was the dead dog party, which was interesting insofar as everyone was drinking quite a bit and I was on medication for my cold of doom and I wasn't drinking. But I still felt fairly out of it, so I hope I wasn't like too weird when I was talking to people at that point, especially since I spoke to a lot of really, really cool people during the dead dog party and I was really excited to be meeting some of these people in person who I'd only known from online. I mean, that's really, for me, the takeaway from this convention. Even though I got myself some shiny things and I got to see some cool panels, like the main thing for me was how many people I got to hang out with. There were people at the convention that I knew from meeting them at Nine Worlds in London. There were people that I knew from meeting them at a previous Worldcon or whilst working on this particular Worldcon. There were people from my real life in London who 
came out to Helsinki for Worldcon. There were some people that I didn't realize were gonna be there who I ran into on the first day and then kept running into the entire convention. There were people that I'd only talked to online who I got to meet. And of course there were all the people from Booktube who I'd not met in person before but I got to spend the entire weekend with and it was so great. I'm not even going to attempt to name check everyone because if I start and if I try I'm gonna miss out loads of people and I don't want to miss out loads of people but it was so much fun. I'm still incredibly tired a week on after the convention. When I came back I slept it off for an entire day quite literally and then I had to take a day off sick. It's just one of those holidays where you feel like at the end of the holiday you need a holiday to recover from your holiday which to my mind is kind of the best kind of holiday. <laughs> it was not restful but I'm so glad that I went and I'm so excited for Dublin 2019. I am currently being talked around to going to San Jose by a number of people both on booktube and on Twitter. I would like to go. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to manage it in terms of just the finances of flying to America and that but fingers crossed because I really like to go. If you've ever looked at a Worldcon from afar and thought mm, that does look cool, if you've ever looked at the Hugo Awards live stream afterwards and thought I'd like to see that for real one day, I would really recommend giving it a go if it is um, near you at any point. Whether for you that is San Jose or Dublin or some other year that's fine but I would recommend giving it a go. I have been talking for so long now I have no idea how long this this video is going to be so I'm going to stop here even though I feel like there's many many more things that I would like to talk about regarding Worldcon. I hope you enjoyed this video however rambly it turns out to be. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever been to a Worldcon and if not do you think you might be able to make it to San Jose next year or to Dublin in 2019. If you'd like to see more from me you can check a recent video right about here and if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button on my face right here for more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.